Hi and welcome to the first ever edition of Insider Outsider. Insider Outsider has been conceptualized as a series of conversations with writers who live and work abroad, basically the Indian diaspora. This has been conceptualized by Atagalata Bangalore. Atagalata, as many of you know, is a bookstore cafe and more than that, it is at the forefront of all conversations around art and literature in Bangalore. Atagalata has also instituted a rather formidable prize for Indian writing in various categories. Today I have as my guest the awesome writer Jane D'Souza. Jane is one of those writers who reinvents herself with every book that she writes. Primarily, her books are around humor, but these books cater to various kinds of readers, adults, young adults, and children. The common thread through them all is that they bring a very strong message and they are always quirky. Welcome to our show, Jane. It's such a pleasure having you. In the interests of disclosure, I must also say that Jane is a very close personal friend. We are a group of writers in Bangalore who used to meet rather often over coffee, over birthday meals, and the, the absence of Jane is sorely felt because she was always there to support us and to give her full weight behind each of our literary ventures. Hi, Jane. Lovely to have you here. Thank you for having me. And Nandita, may I say, it's such a pleasure to talk to a writer of your caliber. And thank you, Ada Galata. It's such an honor, the first speaker on Insider Outsider. My first question to you, Jane, is around all the experiences that you have had as a writer rediscovering her life and her circumstances in a new country. Okay, so I love change. I love uh, utter uncertainty. I thrive on that. And I was very excited about coming to Singapore. You know, this big, huge uh, thing that I built up for myself that I would, uh, uh, my writing would be an infusion, like, you know, cooking, a like cuisine of all sorts of different cultures and, and experiences. And um, it wasn't quite that. So... When I first came here, I was invited to the Asian Festival of Children's Content, which is very large, region-wide, many, many countries, uh, organized by um, Harper Collins for me. And um, it was one problem. I had a session, but I realized I had no one to share stage with, and I didn't know a single person who would even come and watch me. You know, no one the audience. From then on... And moved on. And um, to answer your question, Singapore is a great place to be as a writer if you're Singaporean. You know, because Singapore, the government does so much. Um, they put so much money and encouragement behind their reading program in schools, author visits. Uh, I've been with some author friends on some of these visits. It's, it's, it's a wonderful place of reading and writing and libraries, but um, I'm still an Indian writer. Actually, I'm quite appalled to hear that because in India, you are well known, you have your own identity, and it boggles the mind how you have coped with this erosion of your writer persona in a different country. However, I believe that such circumstances bring out the best in a writer. So how has this journey actually affected your writing and your stories? Yes, Nandita. So uh, Singapore has been lovely for me as a writer, but in ways that I did not expect. Nothing planned. So uh, in Bangalore, I had a full life. Uh, there were kids and there were friends and there were workshops and there was just so much to do. But here... Uh, there's been a lot of alone time, quiet time. And uh, the silver lining is that it's helped me go much deeper to introspect so much. We live by the sea and that's, you know, as it sounds, 
I love it. Um, so I go for these walks by the sea. And uh, I think my characters come to me, I think, much deeper. And that, I think, will reflect in the books that are coming out. The second bit, of course, is the library. The public libraries here are public, free, uh, up to 32 books at a time. So you can imagine how much time I would spend there, how much time you would spend there. And, um, well, guess uh, it's, it's research, it's preparing the ground for the next tree. One of the hallmarks of Jane D'Souza's writing is that she, her protagonists, whether these are the spy stories for the ad- adults or these are books targeted for younger readers, all her protagonists are also insiders, outsiders in their own way because they portray the life of someone who's on the outside looking in. Jane specializes in characters who do not fit in, who are quirky, and who have a very strong story. Could you tell us more about this, Jane? Um, I think I need to answer that in two parts. Uh, Okay, so writing from the point of view of an outsider. Um, I've never fitted in, okay? I think possibly many of us would relate to that. But uh, the difference is, you know, there are, uh, are you North Indian because you're Hindi speaking? Are you West Indian because you're Goan? East Indian because you've been brought up there? Are you Hindu, Christian? Too many boxes. Um, It's only when I started writing that I realized that I could use those boxes to get out of them. You know, I could write about them and that I was comfortable being different and not fitting in. Um, Flyway Boy is... As many readers have uh, written to me or reviewed, um, a book about being different, about being seen as different. Okay. Uh, the second bit to your question, what makes it quirky and the characters? The characters come to me. So on these long walks by the sea that I've mentioned, um, it takes me about six months to even begin a book. And in, I don't begin a book until the character comes to me, until I can feel and talk to them. They, they can't be cutouts, you know, they're, whether it was the flyaway boy or uh, Tina from Happily Never After, the woman who was trapped. So it takes me a long time to start these books and they're around a person. So what next do we expect from the pen of the great writer Jane D'Souza? There are two books Uh, which are in the editing phases, final editing phases. The first one is about a conversation which we never have with kids. It's about death. It's about loss uh, that a nine-year-old girl faces when her beloved grandmother dies. And um, how do we talk about, how do we address that question? The second book is also very exciting. It's a very exciting story. It's about teen mental health and anxiety and the pressures, the pressures of the peer pressure, body image, exam pressure, self expectations. So that book is an experimental book. It's written as a story and uh, fiction. And there are questions it raises, which are addressed by a psychologist at the end. And that's the nonfiction book. So I'm writing it with a psychologist. Really looking forward to both. You have such a quirky sense of humor, Jane. I would love to hear firsthand about your experiences in your explorations of Singapore. Please tell us some things that are memorable. Oh, yes, Nandita, so many adventures and all these walks that I mentioned. Um, So I meet people and the best thing is that they're not like me. So there's lots to collect stories about. Uh, there are people who walk dogs. I love dogs. I miss my dog. So I talk to them. And there was uh, there are people on the bus. There was this little girl who looked at my bangles and she said, what are those? So I said, pretty bangles. They're made of gold. And she said, oh, how much are they? So I said, they're 24 carat. And then she asked me, oh, did you eat them? And so stuff like that. Wrap them up like chocolate. Keep them for someday. Thank you for having me. This chat has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for being with us, Jane. 
And thank you, Atta Galata, for this wonderful new series that has come to me. Thank you, everybody.